This is another Sunday message I'll be bringing to you from the Abundant Life Bible Mission. Uh, I'd like to start off by opening up in a word of prayer. We're going to have a, just a few announcements, and then I'd like to get into the message for today. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus for wisdom, grace, understanding, that you may speak to our hearts, especially to the church. Lord, not just to our church, but the church of Christ, the church of God, those who represent you in this world, that you would use this message to strengthen all of us who are part of the body of Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do and how you're going to use the message. And then, Lord, that you would give all of us understanding that they would, all who are listening will consider what I say, but give us all understanding. For us in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, I'd like to start off with giving the Lord thanks. I want to thank the Lord for the Father, for the Son, for the Holy Spirit, for the victory in Jesus, for being our great high priest, for the strength he gives us each day to live for him, for his keeping power, for his mercy, for his grace, for his forgiveness of sin, for his faithfulness, for his unconditional love, and for his faith to live by. I want to thank the Lord. Well, starting off today, uh, something we haven't been doing, I guess, since, we, well, I know we haven't done it since we, we uh, haven't had service, is to get into memory verses. I'm going to assign a memory verse uh, for uh, next Sunday, and which will be the 14th, and that is 1 Peter chapter 4. 4 verse 17. That's 1 Peter 4 17. Will be the memory verse. Uh, also, want to give, uh, uh, ask you to continue to pray for Sister Mary uh, for the recovery from a back operation that was successful, but now she needs to heal from this and it's very painful. Just pray that she, she would be able to recover and uh, on God's grace in doing so. Now, I'm going to make this announcement, but it's, it's for another short video that will be on YouTube for the ALBM Saints. Um, this is going to be one uh, to give you a tour. We're going to uh, have our brother Sam is going to give you a tour of our new Breaking of Bread room to show you the aspects of that. And I'm only showing it to one or two people, but I'm going to let all the Saints get a chance to see it. And we want to thank the Lord for how he used Brother Sam to, to, uh, uh, to work on this, this, this project to get it done. And thank the Lord again for what he's done, the strength that he gave him. And continue to pray for his health and strength too uh, as he continues to work for the Lord. Well, that's it for right now. But now let's get into the message for today. It's a message uh, because... <clears throat> Yeah. As we look at what's happening in today on the television, the demonstrations, the anger, the bitterness, the violence, and the global uh, global pressure that we are looking at, I like to speak and say some things uh, about what's going on, and also speak to the church. When I say church, not just the ALBM, but to the body of Christ. The body of Christ has some parts of it that is really not functioning, not conducting itself the way it should. Now, I'm not saying that everyone isn't. Uh, many, many of the saints and, and believers and churches are doing what they have to do and doing what they should be doing. But I'm very concerned that the Lord has shown me that the reason why we have these things and what's going on is how we really haven't been looking at Jesus. We haven't seen Christ. And he made mention of this in Matthew chapter 25, verses 40 through 45. 
Here we see Jesus talking about how we deal with things around us in the world. And really what he's saying is, I am in this world, I am around you, and the things that, uh, that you have, we come face to face with, how we treat this world is how we treat him. How we treat in others in this world is how we treat Christ. And not only how we do to others, but how we can uh, ignore or not deal with the need that is in this world. He says, well, if you can ignore that, then you're ignoring me. He says, he talks about this expressly in Matthew chapter 25. And I just want to read these verses and then go back and look at, uh, talk about it. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, In so much, in as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or th thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Now this is can be a very hard saying because we're talking about people who represent him, but how they treated others in this world can be a, a detrimental end to, to their uh, existence, eternal existence. If you notice that he says, uh, he says, go and, Go to that place that's prepared for the devil and his angels. And at the end of the second one, he says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. It's almost like saying many will say, Lord, Lord. But he'll say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Now, we have to be careful of this. Now, what has been shocking to me as we listen to the news reports of all the injustice, and yes, because uh, of what we see about George Floyd being actually murdered and killed in our eyes, right in front of us. Many times we have seen the aftermath. We've seen after pictures. We've seen uh, uh, what what is left at, as a result of, of uh, evil and killings and murders or the injustice that, that people are uh, demonstrating against. But now the world has seen with their own eyes firsthand exactly a person dying in front of them by the hands of people who should be protecting. Now, I don't want to get into all the other ramifications, but the thing of it is, people now are very upset. Now, I like to, to say, just like Tony Evans has been saying, when we see something physical, that means something spiritual is working behind it. Of all the years, hundreds of years, that black people have been murdered, lynched, killed in every way imaginable, now it has come to light and people are taking notice. Now, it's just not that he died and it's, it's that God is now saying, look at this. Open your eyes and see. It's a spiritual thing. But it's letting people know and see the injustice. And now 
majority of the people. Now, we have to remember, these are people who know the Lord, who don't know the Lord. It's like the, it's not just in America, it's all over the world. It's global. It's in every country you can imagine, from South Africa. And these are things that have been happening in these countries all along. Now, all of a sudden, people are rising up against it in one voice. But I tell you, it's more than just one voice. It's God saying, look at the evil that is in this world and what has been going on. And now we want to do something about it or they are aware of it. Now, what surprises me is the many of the evangelicals or those who supposedly represent Christ and their teachings, and their livings, and the things they do. Now, many of them feed the poor. They visit, uh, uh, they, uh, visit those in prison. They clothe the, the, uh, the naked. They do some things, but they have ignored, even in their preaching and teaching, the prejudice that is practiced in their ministries. If you, if you know just about anyone who, going to be honest, especially the ones who really see it have been noticing it all the time, usually are people of color. I have experienced it, not just from the world, but also from supposedly Christian brothers and sisters. If you hear the testimony of many others, they have said, yes, I'm black, but there's a, a divide. It had been said that the most segregated day of the week is on Sunday. These are people who are supposed to love the Lord, love Jesus, practice all of the things that we just talked about, but they won't let you either, even in their church, or they won't have the love of Christ, or they will uh, neglect that individual and they won't even recognize uh, uh, the injustice that has been going on for years. Yeah, I'm not saying all are like that, but there are too many that are. And that is what many uh, black and people of color find fault in the church because when they see these things, people of, of uh, in a lot of these churches have not even mentioned or talked about or addressed openly the things that have been going on for years. Some will say some things like, yeah, that was a bad thing. But this injustice has been going on and on and not making a stand. Now, not only the churches, but other people of other uh, uh, races, all races now are coming out and says, now I see. It's like the Lord has opened up their eyes. But you know, if the Lord has opened your eyes, now what are we going to do with it? Or what are they going to do with it? I know what we want to do with it, especially if you're a, a person of color. We want it not to die down like so many other times. So many other killings and murders of people, not only in the United States. Look at the voice of the martyrs. We look at the killings and murders of Christians. Many churches only want to acknowledge that there are killings of Christians. Yes, but they're killings of this people of other colors. They're killing of people because of uh, their religious beliefs. Even killing another person because of their Islamic doesn't make it right. If, if they're Hindu, doesn't make it right. These things are all wrong. How we treat these people is how we treat Christ. How we ignore these things is how we ignore the things of Christ how we put these other things in this world before the things that we can do for others in this world, the poor that are always with us. He says he always had the poor. But he said, as much as you do it to the least of these, you're doing it unto me. The thing of it is, is that too many churches have been neglecting that part of Christ in their lives. Now we're seeing people are starting to apologize. We're seeing commentators that said they never looked at it this way. They've never, uh, they knew that there was a, a probably a, 
a racial problem, but they couldn't see what the other end was was causing it. They couldn't see what was the rage of people of color and the things they were saying. Even though we've been seeing these things on the news, all of a sudden they have blinders on, but now the blinders have been taken off. And now they're looking for justice. Well, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But our church and us as individuals need to also seek justice and make sure that we are not getting caught up in the wrong response. We're going to talk about that a little later. But one of the things is, is how we treat others in this world as a body of believers. Now, this is, I'm saying this because this is how we need to pray for our brothers and sisters. Some are, are I could yeah, just go to tell the truth, they're fronting. They're really not our brothers and sisters because they have that racial prejudice that is so strong that they can ignore or put you down. I never forget going to the uh, Word of Word of Life uh, uh, camp in in Screw Lake, New York, and I was there. Uh, to get close to the Lord. And there were people from all over the place, but I saw a table that was a group of believers from Virginia, the Richmond and Virginia area. So I said, wow, these are some other believers. So I, I sat down with them, you know, just try to have fellowship. And I've never gotten such a cold response from anybody, even in the world. And yes, it was, in a sense, shocking. I guess we, we uh, being a person of color, we know that there are think of people like that. But I wouldn't think that they, being that they represented a radio broadcast that was coming from uh, our area, but they were very cold, showed no love. And then there was later on, because I stayed for about a week. I was able to sit at another table as a group from New York, mixed group of all colors, all peoples, and we just had a wonderful fellowship and time of fellowship. But what I'm saying, these are the people who are supposed to represent the Word of God, but yet do not treat their own brothers and sisters with love. And that's going to condemn us. So I'm going to get into that a little further because it's, we're going to be judged for that. That includes me, you, or anybody else. But they will have to be judged. And how we treat one another. Matter of fact, the scriptures say, you'll know you're my children by the love you have for one for another. Now, that is an indictment against some of us because we don't love one another. And when p other people on the outside see that we don't love one another, they're going to say, what kind of children are them? They don't even get along with people in their own family. How many times have people, uh, ministers tried to get into churches they, and they say, well, you, you can't come in? I heard one minister say that he was asked to speak at one of the country uh, golfing country clubs to preach and teach the word of God there. But it dawned on him, if he had to join that club, he couldn't because of their policies of excluding people of color. This is the kind of thing that has been going on for so long. And it's been accepted and accepted. And God never did accept it. It's an indictment against God. Those who say they name the name of Christ. Now, if you want to ask somebody to, to speak and preach the word of God or teach there, there's supposed to have been some believers there that can appreciate it. But what does that say about those believers? This is the thing we need to pray for, saints. You know, we want to change the White House, but the thing of it is we got to pray that the Lord would change our house, the house of God and the people of God. Let me go on to say something else about our prayers. I'm talking about how we need to pray. You know, Solomon prayed in 2 Chronicles 15. He was praying for the, the people, uh, and he was saying, for how long a uh, season Israel has been without 
the true God and without teaching priests and without law. But when when they and their trouble did turn into the Lord, I'm sorry, this is not Solomon. This is a, 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 a statement uh, by the king about Israel, by the Lord about Israel. But when they and their trouble did turn into the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. Now what that is saying is people didn't have a teaching uh, meant a, a, a priest or people who can share with them the laws of God. You see, people can preach and say a lot of good things, but if they're not truly teaching the laws of God, the love of God, and the peace of God, this is why you got to have so much vexation and division among you. And it says, and then those times there was no peace to him that went out. They don't have peace. It's difficult many times, and it's not saying that we shouldn't still represent Christ, but then we have a bad example on the side. That's showing, oh, you want me to follow Christ? Look at him. He's talking about Christ. He's got a Bible in his hand, and I can't even go to his church. He won't even speak to me. He won't even acknowledge that the, of the injustices that have been done to me. They, they go along with all of the Jim Crow laws that have been passed, and they say nothing about the injustices. Well, that's going to have to be judged by the Lord. Now, I want to go on. And because, because there's no teaching to that church, they haven't been taught the correct things. And because of that, there's going to always be trouble. This is why we need to continue to pray. Now, it says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, a, ver a verse that we have been using and praying about, and this is what we're saying about God's people. And it says, If my people, which are called by my name, those are Christians, shall humble themselves. Now, now one of the things, excuse me, <coughs> that I can see, that these events have caused many churches to humble themselves. Many are asking the question about race and to deal with these things in their communities. Now they're asking. Prayerfully, they will truly humble themselves and come to the realization that it's something they need to repent of. And then we say that if they humble themselves and then pray and then seek my face, seek God's face, not their own wisdom and understanding, not seek the approval of a certain group of people or political opinions, but seek God's faith, truly seek what he wants them to do, and then turn from their wicked ways, turn from that attitude because of what God wants, uh, getting back to just doing the right thing, which is God's thing, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Yes, this land, the world needs a healing, but it has to start healing here at home in our own church and amongst our own brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'd like to move on to a, another part of, uh, of this message, and that is getting into being angry. The scripture says in Ephesians 4, 26, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now, angry or upset or moved, God is not saying be angry, but don't sin with it. Don't let it turn to bitterness and wrath and outrage when you're angry. Yes, these things have been said and done for years. Many people can't watch anything that deals with racial problems or racial issues and, and the treatment that they've received or, or, or history of these things because they say it makes, it just upsets me so much. What it should do and to be honest, to, to actually look at what has been going on and then do something righteously about it. This is why we need to pray. These are the things that we need to share with those 
that are around us to give them comfort and hope. This is what Christ died for. He says, when they did people like that, they were doing it to me. When they enslaved people, they enslaved me. When they beat and whipped and hung and lynched and burned uh, the homes of people, they were doing it unto me. And that's something that they're going to have to, to, to understand. But he says, don't get so bent out of shape that you raise Cain, you start fussing and cussing. And then like some, so many people today, they want to burn down something, throw bricks and rocks. And that is not what Christ said do. He said, don't let it go, sun go down on your wrath like that. We cannot react in that way. We can be upset. We can be moved. Matter of fact, there, there are examples even when Paul was moved, when they beat and put him in the jail. And he says, now I'm in jail. And they said, well, you can go. He said, oh, no. He said, you put me in here. I'm a Roman citizen. And, uh, of course, the laws of that area said you couldn't put a Roman citizen in the jail. Well, you know, our laws tell us you can't do what you're doing. That's not legal. It's nothing legal about this stuff. But he says, no, I'm not going to leave. He says, if so you put me in here as a Roman, tell them to come and let me out. Because they knew they had messed up when they put a Roman citizen in jail without checking it out. Well, we need to definitely stand by what the law says. We need to stand by it, practice it. And not get so angry that we get bent out of shape that we can't function. Keep a Christ head. Have still the love of Christ. We've been studying that on Wednesday nights. The aspects of having the love of Christ. And guess what? We don't have it. That's why we need the strength of the Lord. People, if you listen to this and you know you go to one of these churches that haven't been shown the love of Christ, that's because you don't have it, your church doesn't have it, the pastor doesn't have it, your philosophy and your denomination doesn't have it, but Christ does. He can give you that peace of God that passes all understanding, and he can uh, show you the right way to treat one another. This is what we need to seek for. We need to pray for one another in that matter. Pray for me in that matter. Many times I get uh, uh, that... that uh, righteous indignation over things we need to pray that we will exercise the love of christ not be passive but still standing on his promises and what the law says but doing it the right way demonstrating the right way and praise the lord for the demonstrations people are just showing their disdainment against what has been going on and to stand out but yes, we should not be cursing, hollering, and screaming. And yes, when they do wrong, doesn't mean that we have to do wrong. This is what we're going to talk about. Because dear beloved, uh, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. This is in Romans 12, 19. And what happens is the world aspect of looking at it, they've been getting along, away with this stuff, getting away with it. No, they haven't. Because the Lord said, vengeance is mine. You can see now, the Lord is going to make some changes. Things are going to happen and hit the fan for all of those things that have been done. Now, if it, don't, if it doesn't happen now, it will happen in the judgment day. And don't worry about it because our time, we say, well, it hasn't happened. It's going on for hundreds of years. Well, when a thousand years goes by, then a day in God's time will go by. God says, hey, the time is like... Two, uh, from 1 to 2 o'clock. 1 to 2 o'clock. And what are you saying? It has to be done in the next 10 minutes? It will be done. And God said, oh, vengeance is mine. I'm going to repay. Everyone who's done these things has never gotten, they have had miserable lives. Things that have happened to them because God says, I'll take care of it. Don't you get in the way. Get out of the way and let me do it. The last thing I want to share with you is this. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be to them that obey not the gospel 
of God. Judgment starts with us, saints. We have to judge our hearts. We have to search our own hearts to make sure we are reacting and doing what God wants us to do. Yes, be angry, but don't sin with it. Yes, be moved, but don't sin with it. And make sure that we trust the Lord that he will take vengeance. He will set things in order. And remember, all of these actions are bringing us to the Lord's coming. There have been things happening. People have been saying, things don't seem... We, we've had demonstrations before. We've had people being killed before and murdered before. But now things are changing. We It seems different. Look, I'm... 72 years old, and I've seen some stuff that have happened. Well, I've seen demonstrations, police brutality all through the years, all of these demonstrations, people have been killed. Um, things have been burned uh, all around, but this is a different thing because it's a spiritual thing. God is moving this world toward getting us prepared for his coming. All of the things that are happening now are to bring us to that place. What's going to come as a result? Now, if righteousness is moving something, do you think Satan is going to sit by and let it go? Oh, you better believe he's going to have an answer. But the question is, are we going to stay with the Lord on our response? Or are we going to bend with the world? Because things are going to hit the fan. All of these things that have been happening, the pandemic, the demonstrations, the murders on, on, that we see have been happening, the killings, the movement, not only just in America, but all over the world, is moving us to a place where God is saying, I'm preparing this world for what I said would happen in the last days. So the only thing I can say, saints, continue to be ready. Don't be asleep as others but to be wide awake and open to what the Lord is doing. I want to close with this because there may be someone listening and says, well, I'm hearing what you're saying. Maybe I don't understand it. The reason because you don't know what Christ can do for you or what he wants to do in your heart and life. Maybe you're afraid. Maybe, maybe you're fearful. Maybe you're saying, I see these things and it is strange. Well, there's nothing strange about the salvation of Christ. This is why he came, so he can deliver you from the judgment that, that is coming. He can deliver you and give you eternal life. And if you want that eternal life, I need you to pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I'm a sinner, and I'm sorry for my sins, and I want Jesus Christ to come into my heart, and my life to be my Lord and Savior from sin. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and born me into your family and help me to live my life from this day forth by your power and your might. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And for those who know the Lord, dear Father, we do pray that, Lord, you will strengthen us as the body of believers to conduct ourselves according to your will. To, Lord, treat others to have the love of Christ, not the hatred and the animosity that is, is uh, uh, going on. That we will respond according to your will. Help us not to lean on our own understanding. Help us not to be conformed to this world. Help us to be knowledgeable and use the wisdom of God and all that we have to say and do. For us in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Be blessed, saints. And remember what Jesus said. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly.